Unemployment rates across the country are varied depending on what state you look into, and benefits are continuing on the federal level and in most states. Montana, however, is ending its participation, its participation in the federal unemployment program that gives people extra weekly but money as the state struggles with a worker shortage. Republican governor announcing on Tuesday that they'll no longer be accepting the federal money and handing it out. Beginning in June, unemployed workers in the state will no longer be receiving the $300 extra that most states are giving to those who are unemployed. The state will launch a new program instead, giving bonuses to people who are unemployed and who are returning to work. David Cathy is a partner with Unity Search Group. It's one of the top recruiting co uh, companies in the country. And David, let's uh, start with why we're seeing so many companies struggling to find workers at this point. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head in your intro there. I mean, we have uh, government subsidized funding at both the state and the federal level. And the, the dollars have accumulated so much to where if someone's making $15 an hour and working 40 hours a week, they can make that amount in the federal and state combined and sit at home. And so it's really hurting the hospitality and tourism industry. It, it's not a huge, it's not all doom and gloom. I mean, look, the past two months, we've added 1.3 million jobs to the American economy. And before that, if you add up the five months preceding that, it was just a million jobs. But the American economy is at a point where it is starting to explode and really come back from the pandemic when you think about the vaccine rollout, the herd immunizations, and people just wanting to get out. We're in the summer months and people really want to get out. And so we're struggling with keeping up with the supply of people because the demand is there in the hospitality, tourism, and other industries. Uh, so Unity Search Group, being a recruiting company, tell me what it is you specifically do with, uh, is it you help the companies or is it that individuals come to you? It's both, you know, so we have two clients. We've got the company and we've got the candidate who's looking for a job. And so our core area of focus is accounting, finance, tax, information technology and human resources. And so companies will come to us with those needs and or candidates will come to us saying, hey, I'm looking for a new job. And we're seeing the impacts there um, over the past few months. Since September, we have had more jobs open since September than we have candidates in order to fill those jobs. Is that unusual? Um, it, it mirrors pre-pandemic uh, months. So it does mirror, but the demand is through the roof and we just cannot keep up with the supply at this point in time. David, can I get you to hang with me just two minutes? I want to talk about minimum wage, people who don't want to work in a minimum wage job and uh, cost of living. Things these are two tough issues that are being dealt with um, in states across the country. And it's something I want to touch on with you. Can you hang with me just two more minutes? Yes. OK, we'll be right back. I'm continuing my conversation with David Cathy, who is one, with United Search Group. It's one of the top recruiting companies in the country. We're talking about unemployment and a lot of workers not wanting to go back into the workforce. Uh, before we get into um, minimum wage, David, and the living wage or, you know, the cost of living going up, women are leaving the workforce uh, or they were laid off because of the pandemic and not going back. That's another factor in this. Yeah, it's a huge factor and something that we've talked locally and we've talked to business owners because there's a component of childcare and kids whose schools aren't open and then elderly and then taking care of the elderly. And so they have removed themselves from the workforce in a lot of cases, which is, uh, is really, I understand it, we all understand it, but it's also disappointing because we're at a point now in the American economy and the American labor force where we are looking for diversity now more than ever. And it's talked about now more than ever. 
Uh, minimum wage is something that on the federal level, trying to raise that to a $15 mark, we went years and years without seeing the minimum wage go up. However, every single year, the cost of living goes up. And so we're seeing the fast food giants, the McDonald's, the Wendy's and, and Burger Kings, um, trying to incentivize people to get them to work uh, at their restaurants because uh, they have a worker shortage. But when you're talking about a min minimum wage of under $10, an hour, I can see why people are like, nope, I think I'll take uh, some unemployment money instead. Yeah, it's, it, you know, who are we to tell everybody what they need to do, but it okay. is a real, real problem. And you think about these franchise owners of some of the restaurants that you mentioned, whether it's Chick-fil-A or McDonald's, I mean, they're in a real predicament because they need to get people in there because the consumers are there, they're ready to spend, but yet you don't have enough people to serve them. So you increase your uh, minimum wage or you're offering bonuses. And so your margin has shrunk significantly and sometimes you're uh, underwater there. And at some point in time, it gets passed on to the consumer. And then the consumer has to make the decision of, you know, whether it's McDonald's, you know, hey, I used to buy a Big Mac for this much and my price has increased by $2 and maybe I'll go somewhere else. Uh, what do we do to get people off the couch, off these unemployment benefits, and get them back into the workforce? Yeah, you know, Betsy, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in Montana and then to see what happens in other states. Do they follow suit? And, and that happens a lot across America. And the interesting thing about what Montana is doing is before the, govern, the governor voted on it to approve it, it was held up in a bipartisan council group that they created. So it wasn't just Republicans. Yes, the governor of Montana is Republican, but it wasn't just a Republican decision or a Democrat decision. They tried to take that off the table and have a bipartisan council look at this, and they voted to unanimously pass that. And so that is going to be really interesting as Republican and Democratic governors across the U.S., look at why that bipartisan council unanimously passed this. I hope Minnesota takes notice because we have a divided legislature, one uh, the only one in the country, and it's hard to get anything passed in this state. So I appreciate your time and your insight, David. Thank you. Thanks, Betsy. Appreciate it. We'll be right back.